Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to another episode of SPSS to APA format. Today we're going to take a look at how you can uh, generate a regression model uh, and then how to uh, properly put this into APA format in uh, Microsoft Word. So today we're working with this data set and the only variables we're going to be looking at is the X, which is the uh, independent variable, the M, which is the mediator, and the Y, which is the dependent variable. And if you don't know how this works, then I suggest watching episodes number, episodes number 12 until 19 uh, of my SPSS series, because they probably explain how a regression uh, analysis works. But for now, we're just going to make sure that you know how to uh, generate the correct output. So you go to Analyze, Regression, Linear, and then as the dependent variable, we select the Y, and the independent variables, we select the X and the M. And then statistics, and this is important, you do not just select the model fit, but you also select the descriptives and the, uh, and the, what, the confident interval, uh, confidence interval. Yeah. Then you press continue, then you press paste, then your syntax screen opens, then you select the code and press the big green play button. And then you get a lot of a lot of tables but the most important table is the last one which is called the coefficients table and we're going to make sure we're going to copy this one copy and we're going to paste it into microsoft word okay and then we paste it in microsoft word uh, and it doesn't uh, it it completely ruins the layout so that's why we're going to make a new one we're going to make an apa formatting uh, one, uh, a formatting table of this regression table and we're gonna make a table to do so but we need to know how many rows and how many uh, uh, columns we need columns uh, so the first row is going to be the title the second row is going to be the names of the statistics the third row is only for the lower level and the upper level of the confidence interval then there's a, a row which is named fixed effects then there's a row which is going to be called intercept. Then variable one, which is the X. Then variable two, which is the M. And then a note in which we uh, describe uh, some of the uh, side notes. And in terms, so we're going to need uh, rows. We're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. Well, in terms of columns, you're going to have a column called effect. You're going to have a column called estimate, the standard error, the lower level, the upper, uh, upper lower limit, the upper limit, and the uh, p-value. So we're going to need six uh, columns. So we're going to go to the next page, and we're going to insert a table with eight rows and six, and six columns. So like this. Then the first one is going to be the title, which is going to be, in this case, regression. Uh, which is going to be called table one regression table and table one is going to be in uh, is going to be in a uh, bold uh, and uh, regression table is you're going to is going to be in italics okay then the first row the, or the second row was as we uh, discussed was the statistics so the name of the effects in this case effects then the Row below that is going to be uh, the uh, what is going to be stay clear for lower limit and uh, and upper limit. Then the row below that is going to be fixed effects, fixed effects. Then the row below that is going to be intercept. Then the one below that is going to be called X. The uh, one below that is going to be called M, and then the one below that is going to be called uh, notes. Okay, and then in terms of the row, and then in terms of the columns, we're going to leave, uh, this one is going to be called uh, estimate. This one is going to be called, uh, estimate, then this one is going to be called uh, uh, standard error in italics. Then this one is going to be called 95% confidence interval 
uh, this one is going to say empty and the last one is going to be in italics the p value and then below the 95% confidence interval you write in italics the lower limit and the in italics the upper limit of the confidence interval which we're going to take a look at in a minute okay so this is the uh, this is uh, all the uh, names and the titles of everything in the, in the uh, of everything in the uh, in the table. So we're going to make it a bit smaller, and then we're going to take a look at the coefficients table to actually fill it in. And first, we're going to take a look at the estimates. So the estimate of the constant, which is also known as the intercept, is 3.99 because we're going to round it off to two decimals. So 3.99. The estimate of the x is 0.02 and the uh, estimate of the uh, mediator is 0, 0.00 if you round it off then the standard error is going to be for the uh, uh, standard error for the intercept is going to be 0.02 the for the x is going to be called is going to be 0.02 as well and for the mediator is going to be 0 0.00 again then the confidence interval, if we take a look at the, well, not at this one, if we're going to take a look at the output. And then we go a bit, okay, we put it a bit like this. You can see that the lower limit for the in, for the, uh, the lower limit for the, uh, uh, for the intercept is going to be 3.95. Why does it keep closing? 3.95 is going to be 3.95. The upper limit of the intercept confidence interval is going to be called is going to be 4.03. The lower limit of the x variable is going to be minus 0.02. The upper limit is going to be 0.06. The lower limit of the mediator is going to be 0 0.00 and the upper limit of the mediator is going to be 0 0.01 and then the p-value of the intercept is 4.03 uh wait no that's the intercept that's the uh, it's going to be uh, 0 0.00 the uh, uh the significance level of the x variable is going to be called is going to be 2 point uh is going to be 0 0.28 and for the uh, uh, mediator, it's going to be 0, 0.00 as well. So this is your entire table as you need it. Uh, and now we're going to make sure that the layout is actually correct. So what we're first going to do is we're going to select the upper uh, row. And then we're going to go to Table Tools and then Layout. And then Merge Cells. So it looks like this. And it immediately, instantly looks a tiny bit better. Then uh we're gonna uh merge these two cells of the confidence interval we're gonna merge cells and then uh in terms of the ho in terms of the lettering in the terms of the words we're gonna center it so it looks like this so it instantly looks a tiny bit better then we're gonna remove all of the borders so you select the entire table go back to lay go back to table design and then borders and we're gonna remove all the borders, so no borders. And it immediately starts to look a little bit more like uh, like it should. Then we're going to select this row, and we're going to give it bottom borders. So you get, so you go to bottom border, bottom borders, and then we're going to select only this one, and it's going to have uh, bottom borders as well. Oh, uh, bottom borders. No, I only want the only want these two. Why can I not select? Okay, uh, these two, and then to give them top borders, top borders, yes, and then select the entire row, and give those bottom borders as well. So it looks like this, and then you're gonna select the last, the uh, the one of the last, this one to last row, and give those bottom borders. So these are all the lines which you need in your, uh, these are all the lines that you need. And it starts to look a little bit more like, uh, it starts to look a little bit more like an APA 
uh, formatted now. Uh, now next up is going to be uh, uh, that we select with the right, uh, with your right uh, mouse click, you select this one, and you go to uh, Auto Fit, and then Auto Fit to Contents, and it makes it it makes it a lot smaller and a lot more APA like. They're going to select all of it, and we're going to make sure that it's not on Calibri 11, but that it's going to be Times New Roman, and then 12. Okay, and then we're going to fill in the note, uh, and the note should contain the, uh, the note should contain n equals, so the number of uh, respondents, and we have that in our descriptive settings was, in our descriptive table, you can see that the n was 3645, so 3645, 3645. Then what more do we need in the notes? We need uh, that LL means lower limit and UL means upper limit and that CI means confidence interval. Uh, and notes, okay, so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna write notes. It's gonna be a dot. It should also be in italics. And then that the N, the N is 3,645. Uh, CY is confidence interval, uh, uh, LL is lower limit, and uh, UL is upper limit. And then last thing we're going to do is we're going to merge all these, we're going to merge these cells, because now it looks like absolute crap. So we're going to go back to layout and then uh, merge cells. So and now it looks like this and this looks a lot better. And this is the final APA format, what it should look like. So we've got a table one in, uh, we've got table one in bold. We've got regression table in italics. Then we have all the names of the uh, statistics you need. We have the names of the variables. We have it filled in and you have the node and the bottom. And you have the correct borders, which should look like this. Uh, the only thing which I would change is actually I would remove the zeros in front of the, uh, in front of the, uh, ver in front of the values. So it would look like, because it's better to do it that way. So remove these zeros. I think both is correct. You can leave them as they are, but I think it looks a bit more professional to remove the zeros like this. Okay. So this is what the APA regression table looks like. If this video was helpful to you, then please leave a like uh, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I want to make BuzzPSS grow as much as possible so as every subscription counts. So it would be really helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.